hunt for the perfect carry gun, we all make choices based of our idea of carrying. We make certain compromises in things like caliber, magazine size, gun size, handleability, recoil, and other features based off of comfort, concealability, and control. This is what my compromise is. This is Carry Chronicles Compact Guns. Let's get to work. Guys, work here. Welcome back to Work the Trigger. So the question of what gun, what caliber, what size has always been a pretty hot debate. Oftentimes you kind of have the two extremes. I carry a gun this big in spite of the concealment issues because bigger is better. And the other side, I carry this gun because it conceals completely and easily in spite of its self-defense compromises. Well, I'm here to tell you they're both wrong and they're both right. Selecting a defensive firearm for carry is an incredibly personal choice. And that choice is one that only the person that's carrying the firearm can really make for themselves. Now, that's not to say that we can't have conversations about it, that you can't point out pros and cons to both sides of this. But those issues can only be weighed by the person who's actually taking on carrying this firearm. So with all of that talked about, this is why I personally carry compact guns. In almost every aspect of my personal carry, uh, I carry a compact gun, whether it's my P10C, my CZ P01, a Glock 19, a SIG X Compact. I almost exclusively carry compact guns, unless there are other factors that are limiting or suppressing my ability to do that. For me, there's a lot of factors in carrying a gun that I'm concerned with. One of the big ones is shootability. I want a gun that shoots well, needs to be reliable, needs to be accurate, and needs to be controllable. It's because this gun that you carry it's got a job to do, and although we don't like talking about that job, if it's not up to performing that job, then there's no point in carrying it. When stuff gets rough, it's got to be able to perform a task. Now, typically speaking, the larger the gun, the smoother it shoots, the more controllable it is, and oftentimes the more accurate it is, whether that's actually inherently in the firearm itself or based on the capabilities that that gives the user, they do tend to be slightly more accurate. As an example, a Glock 34 is gonna be smoother than a Glock 17 or a Glock 19. A CZ P10F is gonna be more controllable than a P10C or a P10S. The CZ SP01 is smoother than the P01. So the larger the gun, generally, the better it's actually going to perform that job that we were just talking about in a self-defense situation. Now, in addition to that shootability factor, typically speaking, those larger guns also have increased magazine capacity. For a full-size gun, you're typically looking at between 17 to 19 rounds. For a compact gun, you're typically looking at between about 13 to 15 rounds. And then for a subcompact, it's usually about 10 to 12. Now, there's a lot of gray area when it comes to acceptable number of rounds in a magazine. Now, again, this is a, this is a really personal choice. Depends a lot on uh, what your idea is of the acceptable number. Now, my personally, mine is 10. And just like the government, I pulled that number out of my ass. But with that being said, it's a solid number that I can generally work around. If a magazine that I have in my gun doesn't hold more than 10 rounds, I have to carry a backup mag. Now, that being said, obviously more bullets are better. You're never gonna hear somebody who got in a gunfight saying, I wish I had less bullets. Personally, I prefer to have 14 or 15, and even then, if I'm getting myself into a situation that I'm not fully aware of, I usually carry a backup magazine on top of that. But if my gun has 10 or less, I will always carry a backup magazine. So the larger the gun, the less likely I am to feel that I need that backup mag. Now, yes, you can carry a backup magazine as a solution to magazine-related failures, but that's kind of extenuating circumstances. And on a normal day's EDC, when I know that I'm just running down to my in-laws, I don't go that far. Now, for me, the next consideration is concealability. Notice comfort isn't in there. I, I think it was Clint Smith that said, carrying a gun isn't supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be comforting. If that's not true, I'm sure somebody will let me know down in the comments who actually said that. But I'm not overly concerned with comfort. I carry appendix, so that's quite obvious that I'm not concerned with comfort. But what I am concerned with is uh, concealability, people not knowing that I have a gun on me, and the ability to get to that gun very quickly. That's kind of what has led me to appendix carry. It is the most concealable location, and it's the fastest draw location. The ability to go by unnoticed, or at least unassuming, while maintaining a fast response time are things that rank really high on my list when I'm looking at where I'm gonna carry and what I'm going to carry. Now, obviously there are a massive other number of factors that go into choosing a carry gun. We will get into those eventually with carry chronicles like appendix carry, caliber, etc. But those two things, how the gun functions and concealability, rank pretty high on my list. Now, why do those two things 
push me towards a compact gun. So we talked about the shootability, large versus small. The compact guns are in the middle, but they shoot more similarly to their large counterparts than their small counterparts. A Glock 19, for instance, is much closer in shooting feel to a 17 than it is a 26. For me, the compacts are reliable, controllable, and accurate to shoot. They're long enough to have a good, consistent self-defense velocity out of your ammo. With pistol ammo especially, speed is king. You need those higher velocities in order to fully expand the rounds. Typically speaking, barrel lengths of about 3.75 to 4.25 inches are going to be enough to give you those velocities, since most of the time that ammo has been tested through a 4-inch barrel in the first place. And along with that, they still have a long enough sight radius that if you're living in the past still using iron sights, your sight radius is long enough to be able to maintain that iron sight accuracy. And yes, sight radius matters. I've got a whole video on that. They're also big enough to manipulate under duress. We've all heard that under duress, your fine motor skills start to erode. And although sometimes I believe that is exaggerated a little bit and some of it can be trained out, you still don't want to handicap yourself by creating overly small controls or an overly small surface to be able to grab onto. But at the same time, they're also smaller than the full size guns, meaning they're easier to conceal. For me, considerably easier to conceal. I'm not a big guy, so the grip of larger firearms like a CZP-10F or a Glock 17 tend to stick out when I appendix carry, and it's even worse if I carry somewhere like three o'clock. Now, I have what I jokingly call small hands. They're actually closer to like standard European size. I say that because on all of the European firearms that have finger grooves, my hands fit perfectly. So things like compact guns actually offer a complete grip for my hand. And most subcompacts are close to if not allowing my finger to dangle off the bottom. Now, kind of a nifty thing about the compact guns is if you are concerned about that magazine capacity, most of the time those compact guns will be able to run their larger counterparts magazines. Now, yes, that is true for the sump compacts as well, but it's not true for the larger ones. If you've got a Glock 17, you can't simply run a Glock 19 magazine. You can do that if you've got a 19, you wanna run 17 magazines. Now, it's not gonna be quite as shootable. You're not gonna get that extra grip length, but you are gonna get the extra round count. And if again, and you have tiny child hands like I do, that extra grip length is not gonna do a whole lot. Now, obviously a compact's not gonna be as good a shooter as a full size. It's not gonna be as concealable as a subcompact. But as I said in the opener, we all make compromises based on what our idea of carry is. There are features that we're willing to accept, to look past, or that we're willing to be sticklers about in order to get what we want from our gun, which in the end is what it's all about. Are you comfortable with what you choose to carry? Can you hit that shot or are you a nervous wreck thinking that possibly everybody can see that you're carrying a gun? For me, a compact gives me the confidence that I can nail that shot while at the same time letting me know that I'm fully concealed and maintaining that low key presence. And that is why I choose to carry a compact gun. Well, thanks for watching guys. I hope you appreciate this video and the journey that we're going on with Carry Chronicles. If you like this video and you like the series, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna know when future Carry Chronicles comes out, go ahead and hit that notification bell down there. Now, as I said earlier, we have topics that we're gonna cover with this, but if there are specific topics that you're interested in or you wanna know about, go ahead and write those down in the comments so that I know what order to do these in. I hope this insight into what somebody carries and how they came to that conclusion is in insightful for you and helps you to decide what's right for you because again in the end that's what it's all about it's about our own emotional comfort with the weight of this thing that we choose to carry so thanks again guys remember i appreciate every one of you and until next time do your research get informed and get to work